Hello and welcome to the next e-learning session of SGT University. I am Professor S. C. Mahapatra. I am talking about a chapter related to community medicine, that is health management. The purpose of presenting this chapter is that most of the medical students do not understand the purpose of health management, why should we learn about health management and what is the necessity of medical students learning management. The, the reasons are very simple. Now if we go to the learning objectives, it speaks of the same thing. What is the need of health management? Why should we do or read management so far as health is concerned and how can we improve the health by management? These are very basic issues and very basic problems. The first thing is there is nothing like health management. It's the management principles used in the health sector. That's what is known as health management and therefore we have to understand some of the issues of health, man health management which will be included into health sector. Now let me give you some example. What is the need of the health management? The need of the health management is very crucial. When we started of any program from the government side or the health sector, we always failed. We always failed in many of the programs that we really started. Even today we have not conquered tuberculosis. Why do we fail? We fail because of certain reasons which, can, which should be explained through the issues of management. A simple example is when the small packets of tea is being sold, it is available every nook and corner of the villages of this country. Even matchbox that's available in the, any nook and corner of this country. But when we started sending ORS packets to the people, it did not reach. We could not make it available to the people because we failed in managing the supply of those material. As when the commercial people came, they presented their salt in such a way that every nook and corner it has reached and today we go and ask salt by the name of the company not about the salt and one company competes with the other saying that isme wo hai jo aapke namak mein nahi hai that means there is a competition between the two companies in selling the salt where we utterly failed because we did not use the management issues and management principles and that's what is the greatest need of having management in the health sector. Now I said that we fail. Why do we fail in program management or program implementation? There are only three reasons why we fail. The reasons are administrative failure, technical failure or operational failure. There is no fourth variety of failure. Now these, these things, whether it is malaria eradication program or whether it is ARI or it is any program that we, we produce for the people to be accepted, we fail. Either there is administrative failure, technical failure or operational failure. <coughs> now let us come to some successes that we have done in health sector using the management principles. One of them is CSSM program, Child Survival and Safe Motherhood program. The Child Survival and Safe Motherhood program completely based on managerial principles. In fact, there was a module in the CSSM program which completely based on management principles. And we use management principle in such a way that within five years, the maternal mortality, which was 400, came down to 100. The infant mortality rate reduced to half, that is even less than 60. Today it is 45. Now earlier it was 120. Within five years we achieved this. Not only that, we have got international certificate for eradication of poliomyelitis, for eradication of maternal and neonatal tetanus only because of CSSM program. One program could get so many successes just because we use the principle of health management. Similarly, UIP, 
Universal Immunization Program, IMNCI. These programs always depended on the principles of management. When we trained the officials, the staffs, the CMOs, deputy CMOs and even down the line to the ASA, we train them on managerial principles, who will do it, what he will do it, when he will do it, why he will do it and the manner he will do it. So these made the program successful for the different programs that we have been naming now. Now let's understand what are the different components of health management. <clears throat> I always say management is a word which can be dissected into three words. Manage, men, t, that is tactfully. If one can manage the men tactfully, the entire system is managed. There is no need of doing anything else. Now then what is a manager? A manager in the real sense is he who knows how to get the work done. If the work is done, then the management is done properly. There are a lot of definitions of management. One of them is to produce the best output with the least resources used, utilized and to produce the effective or qualitative work out of the most minimum resources that we have got. There are a number of definitions of that and effective utilization of scarce resources to produce the most effective output is also another definition. Now if we talk like that then what are resources? The resources are only four M's, the man, the money, the material and the moment or the time. Now these are the four M's which are the basic issues of manager management or managerial calculations. <clears throat> now there are people who talk 8 M's, 14 M's, 19 M's like that. The number of M's can increase but when we combine all of them come to only 4 M's, man, material, money and moment. Moment means time as I said. Now these are the things that has to be looked into. Now when we talk about the health sector, the health sector the managers are in a conical inverted concept. The top people are top managers who are the CMOs, the deputy CMOs or even professors of medical colleges and the, then the middle level managers who are the mainly the doctors who work in the hospitals or the um, assistant professors of medical colleges and then comes the first line managers who are the supervisor level workers. For example in OT, the, OT, the surgeon comes as a top level manager, he does the surgery, the assistants, those who assist the surgeon are mid level managers and the first line managers are the OT sisters and the um, anesthesia technologist and the um, sterilizer who sterilizes the equipment, these are all first level managers. Now, below the first level manager are technical managers who are the actual persons who carry out the sterilization of the equipments, the arranging of fuming of the operation theater and washing the um, clothes or the gowns of the OT. Now these are the technical managers and one group we always forget are the community managers. Therefore in my slide you will see that the community managers are kept upside down. The community managers whereas the healthcare program is concerned remain at the grassroots level like the ASAs, the Anganwadi workers and the community health guides and similar people who work by the people, for the people, from the people and of the people. Now they are chosen from the people to provide healthcare delivery system and they support the healthcare delivery system from the grassroots level. Actually the technical managers and the community level managers, they are the best people or they are the most important people who provide healthcare delivery system actually at the grassroots level or the delivery point. 
the top level managers have got conceptual thoughts of providing health care the mid level managers have got both conceptual as well as technical way of working but the most technical people are first level managers technical managers and community level managers that means all the people all the medical staffs are or health staffs are managers everybody is a manager therefore what is most important for organizing a healthcare program or organizing a medical college or organizing a district level hospital is the role of a manager now then what are the attributes of manager the manager should have a typical body language of manager the body language should be such that it should not appear that he is really not behaving well with anybody the manager's behavior should be very very good both structurally as well as functionally means by body language and by mental ability as well as the way he speaks the moral strength he has got now these are the most important component but the manager cannot be deficient in the knowledge so he should have a special knowledge for example the manager who is the dean of a medical college or who is the head of the department of surgery should also have the knowledge of how to run the courses what are the different courses or how to do a surgery and what is the best way of doing surgery so that he can just simply go to the ot and while some other surgeon is doing he can just say that this is not the way go like that and that is enough there is no need of showing any other way of working now the level of experience always increases the special knowledge the higher the experience the higher is the knowledge because knowledge is also a skill that's a cognitive skill and that the manager should have the human attitude that's the biggest characteristics of a manager he should be human in behavior a manager if he goes to the marriage party of one of his staff members the staff will feel elated and will probably give more to his work and if he just says hello or good morning to people then probably it gives a better feeling to the worker so that it is very appreciable while getting the work done but the most important thing put a good face on your face should be smiling and as you can see in the slide the smiling face always gets the work done very well now we have said that only managing the people or managing the men tactfully is the best way of managing the whole organization of the health sector now in this slide i have shown only one word that is supervision or supportive supervision it has got different letters like s u p e r v i s e supervise now if you go letter by letter the first s represents supply and this supply is the thing but input what are the things we have given suppose we go for seeing that the anm has distributed oral pills or iron or folic acid tablets or not but before and then we say the the most important attitude of a supervisor or an inspector in our country is putting the hands on the waist or saying like this or saying like this i will going to harm you i'll do this i'll do that but that's not the way of supervision supervision is supportive supervision you have to support and before saying anything that why iron folic acid were not distributed we have to first see was the iron available was the folic acid available for the nm to distribute if they were not available there is no reason why you should ask the nm that why iron was not provided i have seen in many districts that iron folic acid tablet does not reach to the nm on many months for months together and therefore the supply of iron and folic acid to the pregnant women are not done similarly once upon a time we were not getting immunizations available with the anm and then expecting giving immunization by the anm was not possible now what is this supply 
the supply is nothing but input. If you cannot have input, you cannot expect output. On one side we say the, the getting best output out of the least resources. Resources are those four aims and then material is one of them that we must see the supply is proper. Now coming to the other words, U. U stands for understand the worker. One has to understand the worker, really he did not work or he has some problem for which he could not work. There is a difference between did not work and could not work. A supervisor has to see whether the worker was unable to work or did not intentionally work. And then understanding that is not only enough. The P stands for problem solving. If you find that the worker has a problem, one has to solve it. I will give an example. These laboratory technician of primary health centers were trained about examining malarial slides for MPs. But when tuberculosis program started, they were also asked to examine about tuberculosis slides, putum examination for Jelen's stain. Now since they were not trained, they were unable to do. And then the reporting was poor. So that was the problem. We had to understand that. And at a very later stage, we really understood that what is their problem. And then we trained them of doing Jaden stain. And thereafter, they could do for leprosy or tuberculosis program. So it's not the fault of the worker. It is fault of the managers that we have never taught them how to really look into the issues. <coughs> the third is E, supervise E. E is educate. There are certain times when one has to educate the people for working. If we cannot educate, we are no longer good managers. For example, earlier we were saying in case of diarrhea, one has to give a liter of water with a fist of sugar and a pinch of salt. Now it is not to be given because it produces hypernatremia by which there is a larger amount of diarrhea or the diarrhea episode increases. And therefore it is denied that we cannot give home made fluid. It is only either home available fluid that is like chanch or dal or ORS. Now this is not known to the a &M or the grassroots level worker or grassroots managers or technical managers. What they do when a case of diarrhea is there, they say that give a glass of water with a fist of sugar and a pinch of salt and that increases the diarrhea. And therefore, if this knowledge is deficient, we have to give that knowledge. This education needs to be given to them. We had given a lot of educations in CSSM program or IMNCI or UIP to the people. I, I can tell you many professors, even medical college professors cannot give BCG vaccines properly because they are not trained. While the ANM at the grassroots manager can give BCG vaccine properly because he is trained, she is trained on that. The important point for the purpose of management is also the R, the word R. That means record analysis. One has to see whether the record maintenance is proper or not. If there are 10 vials of tetanus toxoid available with the a &M, so she should be able to give at least 70 women tetanus toxoid. 70 because some amount of vaccine is wasted or what is known as utilization. Utilize, during utilization, we usually some amount of vaccine we misuse. That means that is either in the syringe or in the needle. So for one vial, we give not more than 7 to 8 doses. So if there are 10 vials, one can give only 70 to 80. So you, one has to see the record. If the a &M has been provided with 10 vials of tetanus toxoid, then she should have at least given tetanus toxoid to 80 women. If 80 women tetanus toxoid has not been given, then she should be asked why could you not give when the supply was proper. Now this is what is record analysis. The, st the letter V stands for verify the integrity. There are certain occasions when the integrity of the worker is not bad, but the output was not good because of certain circumstances. 
There are a lot of examples, if you look around yourself, you can see a lot of examples where you can see that the intention of the worker was not bad, but the output of the work was not properly done. In that case, one has to understand the integrity of the worker. That is one of the greatest role of the supervisor. Now, there are certain issues which has to be informed to the people, like the word supervise, I stands for inform. Now, what has to be informed? Then what is the difference between educate and inform? Education is giving information deep so far as the cognitive knowledge improves. Information is something which is given to the worker which is beneficial to him. Like your TA has increased from 10 rupees per kilometer to 20 rupees per kilometer. Or you can uh, give him information that there is a training program in the district level and you can be trained on this so you give an application these are certain information that has given to the that has to be given to the worker so that the worker knows where i have to do what is the benefit of me a worker's personal benefit is always a benefit to the work production also now coming to the word s s stands for support now support means the worker at the grassroots level, a grassroots manager or technical manager or even mid-level manager has to be supported by their superior staff or the superior managers because this is important to maintain the integrity of the worker. For example, if I have to talk something or I have to scold my worker, sometimes we need to scold, sometimes we need to make them understand. Now in that case, if I tell somebody in front of the worker that damages the work. I will give an example. There was a supervisor who was a professor and while going to the field, she started telling the ANM that you don't know how to give immunization so you, I will teach you in front of the people. Now what happened by that? This is an exam, life example. What happened by that? The next week onwards, people said no, 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 you don't know how to give immunization, we are not going to take immunization from him. So what happens that the person who was giving immunization to the people for years together and people used to come to that person to get immunized did not get immunization from that ANM just because of a fault of a supervisor manager who scolded the worker on the field. So therefore one has to support the people in front of the worker or in front of the people so that there is no problem or people have a trust on the healthcare worker. That is very important and this was one of the most important component which we utilize in CSSM program and therefore CSSM program reached to a success. Now because we support them, we understand them, we understand their work, their work, we understand their integrity, that does not mean that we evaluate them. Every supervisor has a personal responsibility to evaluate every worker internally how best he can be trusted for a particular work and these understanding the worker problem solving all these are process of supervision and evaluation or evaluate is the output now if you evaluate some people and then you feel that he is really weak in knowledge and then one has to train them and get the more effect of out in form of output. What is this? This is feedback. So this completes the entire cycle of management that is input, process, output, feedback, make the improvement, then put the in input and then process output. That cycle goes on and this is known as management cycle. This could be made very complicated by explaining. I just gave the example by the word supervision so that I can make it the management cycle complete and the most important that's all of us have the sunrise in the healthcare by managerial skill thank you